here's what we have in store on this edition of Shelby This Week. Utica Community Schools is partnering with Macomb County to work on their safety protocols in their school system. As construction continues at the Amazon site, people can start getting excited because the company released a few job postings. And Shelby Township is preparing for the second annual Business Awards. We have all the information you need to know so you can attend the event on March 9th. We have all this and much more coming up on Shelby This Week. Hello and welcome to this edition of Shelby This Week. I'm Courtney Bennett. And I'm Kelly Kasuda. We're learning more information after a man's body was found in Shelby Township on the morning of February 19th. His body was found frozen by ATV riders near a gravel pit at the intersection of Hickson and Barclay. The man was identified as Joshua Clark, who had been missing from Rochester Hills for just over two weeks. The Macomb County Medical Examiner found no signs of trauma. His body has been sent to a toxicology exam and the results are expected back in six to eight weeks. Last year around this time, two men were found dead in the same area. According to Chief Shalide, one man was homeless and lived in the gravel pit. The other death was a result of substance abuse. Chief Shalide believes these deaths are not connected and he assures the residents there is nothing to be concerned about. If they were, should be worried, guess what? I'd make a public announcement and let everyone know what's going on. Uh, there's absolutely nothing for anyone to fear, even over in that area. That area is very safe. Joshua Clark's death is still under investigation, and the Shelby Township Police Department is working closely with the Oakland County Sheriff's Department to get more answers. Anyone with information is encouraged to call Detective Lieutenant Schmittler at 586-731-2121, his extension 315, or you can call the Oakland County Sheriff Detective Schroeder at 248-537-3513. After the unfortunate events which occurred on February 14th at a high school down in Parkland, Florida, schools across the country are looking to make sure this does not happen again. Utica Community Schools is working with Macomb County to allow access to their schools. Our Stacey Sanseterra has more on how this initiative can keep students safe. What's happening today is, uh, is of concern for many of us. I think uh, those that are working in the schools, um, obviously law enforcement, uh, those that are responsible as government uh, personnel, but more importantly, parents. In what has become an all too often occurrence, local law enforcement and schools are reviewing their safety policies and figuring out how they can do it better. The emotional ripple effects of the deadly school shooting in Parkland, Florida has reached Macomb County. The challenges are always, what do we do next? How do we continue to protect our children and make sure they're 100% secure? We know here in Macomb County, what we have added is an incredible opportunity or feature here that gives all of us the opportunity to, to add a safety factor for the children going to school, the faculty uh, and the staff in that school, and just as important, the officers that are responding to these incredible situations if and when it were to happen here. And this additional safety factor comes by way of strong partnerships with school officials and local law enforcement. Utica and Romeo Community Schools are the first of 21 districts in the county to provide ComTech, Macomb County's Communications and Technology Center, access to on-site school cameras. It's, it's mind-boggling the, the capabilities we now have. And the school sat back and they thought, this is of interest to us. Let's, uh, let's figure out how do we partner and how do we work with our IT centers because we have cameras in our schools. And I want to reassure our parents that it is this collaborative effort, it is this partnership with the MISD, the Intermediate School District, with local law enforcement, with the Sheriff's Office, with the county exec, that we can continue to assure our families that our children are safe. In the event of an emergency, employees at ComTech can immediately access live feeds of cameras in public areas of schools, such as hallways, exterior doors, and outside views along nearby roads and parking lots. How this system should work, God forbid, somebody walks into the school over there, uh, he's armed, okay, people encounter him, they're calling 911, we're getting calls, there's an armed intruder at such and such a high school, our officers will respond immediately. Each one of our officers have a counter assault weapon with them to handle any type of situation there is. They will go to that school, 
that we get information from our dispatchers real time. They will locate them on the cameras and say they're at such and such high school, they're walking down the main hallway, or now the guy is on the second floor, he's wearing a white shirt. We can pinpoint his exact location real time. And those schools are gigantic complexes, as you imagine. So you, right now, you and I, let's go respond to a school shooting up at any school. Where are we going to go? What door are we going to go into, if that makes any sense? So this is going to give them exact pinpoint information of where they need to respond. When the officers are responding from a SWAT team, my gosh, you have one of their commanders here talking to their officers live as they're going through that school, telling them, hey, there are kids that are hunkered down in one of the rooms. You know what, there's a, there's a, there's a door that leads outside. Maybe somebody could breach that door and get those kids to safety. Or before an officer walks into a room, they can already identify where the person is at and they can tell them, this is what the makeup is of a person. We know what type of weapons they have. We can see it. We know how many there are. We know how many children are in our school. Unbelievable uh, advantage that we have now with this technology. An unbelievable advantage as Macomb County schools come together with Contech for a very important cause. But the key here is, is that all of us are working in partnership to ensure the safety of our children, our faculties, and our community. For Shelby This Week, I'm Stacy Sansaterra. The construction site is looking more complete every day, and now the excitement surrounding Amazon and Shelby Township is growing. If you drive past the site at 23 Mile and Mound, the 1 million square foot building is looking pretty close to being done. And we have good news if you're looking to be employed by the internet retailer. Jobs have been posted. The Fulfillment Center will ultimately employ hundreds of workers. So far, five positions are open on their website. If you're interested in applying for any of these jobs, visit Amazon.jobs. The second annual Shelby Township Business Awards are fast approaching. The ceremony recognizes contributions to the Shelby Township economy. The categories are divided up into residential, advanced manufacturing, healthcare, hospitality, and community redevelopment. This year's winners include Kuka Robotics, Da Francesco's, Team Rehabilitation, Black Hills Estates, and Amazon. Anyone is invited to attend the Business Awards and residents are encouraged to be a part of the ceremony on Friday, March 9th at Kuka Robotics Tech Center. The event is hosted by the Sterling Heights Regional Chamber of Commerce. Tickets are $20 for Sterling Heights Regional Chamber members and $25 for non-members. You can purchase tickets for the event and find out more information by visiting the website on your screen. Still ahead on Shelby this week, the Shelby Township Art Fair might be several months away, but the committee is hard at work preparing for the weekend event, and they're looking for artists and vendors. Applications are live right now. One organization is helping the community, but they're looking for help from you in the form of Easter boxes. And one barbershop in Shelby Township has a unique theme. We'll tell you how they're helping out those who have served our country. Hi, I'm Matt Signorello, Lieutenant Inspector with the Shelby Township Fire Prevention Division. I'm here today to discuss escape planning. When it comes to escape planning, it's always wise to plan ahead. If a fire breaks out in your home, you may only have a few seconds to get out safely. Make sure everyone in the home knows where to go. First, make a home escape plan. It can be as simple as a family conversation. Always know at least two ways to get out of a room. Teach your children to escape on their own and to practice fire drills as a group. It is a good idea to keep doors closed, especially at night and especially with children. When it comes time to get out of your home, designate a meeting place, typically at the end of the driveway near a mailbox or a tree. If the alarm sounds, get out and stay out. Never go back in for anything. That's what the fire department is for. If the conditions are smoky, get low and go. Call the fire department as soon as you get outside. Implement your plan today and stay safe. The Shelby Township Library hosted a presentation about the orphan train that traveled through Michigan for 73 years. Our Madeline Miller was there to learn all about it. Hearing that over 12,000 orphans were put on a train and taken to Michigan between 1854 and 1927 may sound like fiction, but it's actually a fact. 250,000 orphans were transported from New York and Boston to 46 states on what was called the orphan train. Married couples would meet the train at the station and pick out which child they wanted. 
but nowadays people have a hard time believing it even happened because records of it are buried in census reports. The historians in the state uh, did not know that there was a, an orphan train here. Part of the reason not many people are familiar with the baby train is because train riders have kept their silence. The orphan train riders didn't want to talk about it because it made them, well they felt that we must have been very poor or my parents wouldn't have given me away. But uh, to be broken up in a family back then uh, is a lot different than it is today by a long shot. The silence may have kept the train hidden, but Alan David Eicher happened to stumble across some records while working on a documentary. In Oxford, Michigan was one town that uh, we discovered uh, two orphan train riders uh, had lived there. We saw their obituaries and we thought if there's two orphan train riders, there's got to be three, four, maybe a hundred. Much to their surprise, there was a lot more than 100, 12,500 to be exact. The first orphan train riders were 14 boys who arrived in Dwajek, Michigan in September of 1854. Over the years, they have discovered 48 cities in Michigan that were recipients of these orphans. It did happen, and we know it happened, so. I'm Madeline Miller, Shelby This Week. The Yikers travel all around the state of Michigan giving these presentations and telling the train rider stories. Celebrating 35 years this year, the Shelby Township Art Fair is a summer staple. While many people attend and enjoy the event, there's a lot of work which has to be done before the big show. These look good. The Art Fair Committee is looking for artists and vendors to display their works on August 11th and 12th. The event is held outside the Shelby Township Municipal Grounds and booths are 15 by 15 feet with some availability for double booths. Vendors and artists will have Friday night, August 10th to set up their displays. But don't worry, there will be overnight ground security on the property and there is free daytime and overnight parking at the site. Artist categories include art media, emerging artists, craft media, and Michigan made market. Applications are available at the Shelby Township Parks and Recreation Department or online at shelbyartfair.org. The application deadline is April 1st. One Macomb County organization needs your help. Samaritan House will distribute over 200 food boxes to their clients for Easter. But in order to give out these boxes, they still need a few more items to make the packages complete. They are looking for cake mix, frosting, small jars of mayonnaise, small bags of brown sugar, and jelly beans. Each client will also get a $20 gift card to Sheena's, Meyer, or Kroger so they can purchase their own meat. Food items can be dropped off at their location on Van Dyke in Washington Township on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, or Fridays. Gift cards can also be dropped off during those times or they can be mailed in. A barbershop in Shelby Township is centered around a very unique theme. Our Robert Gimbrell stopped by the location on Van Dyke and saw just how much pride the owner has for military veterans. Old Glory Barbershop is not your ordinary shop. This barbershop is new to the township and has a unique patriotic theme. Hold the core and everything of the shop is, is definitely um, to honor them. My grandfather was a veteran. With 10 years of experience as a barber, Shelby Township resident and owner Richard Zuccaro wanted to make this shop very special for veterans. Well, they go work thankless jobs and that's, that's police, that's firemen. You know, they, they go out and they, they work and they don't think about themselves. 29-year veteran and grandfather to Richard, Ronald Zuccaro loves the new barbershop. I think it's fantastic uh, when he's dedicating this to veterans. It's a nice gesture to set everything up and have Old Glory flying and have all the, the flags for all the different branches of service. The idea of creating this old-fashioned barbershop, Richard was influenced by his grandfather. I'm proud to have a grandson that thinks that way. And it's, it's nice because all the vets come in here, we sit down, we talk to one another. It's really nice. For every veteran that walks into Old Glory, we'll receive a discount. I want to let them know how much I truly appreciate what they've done and how much I, I uh, 
I appreciate the sacrifices they've made for that flag. Old Glory Barbershop, honor our veterans for their service. You're looking good, Ronald. Hey, thank you, I know I do. <laughs> and that's the way you can give back to your community. I'm Robert Gambrell, Shelby this week. Coming up next, the theater at Eisenhower High School is set to perform their spring musical, and we have a look at all of their hard work as they prepare for the show. And an event specifically for preschoolers will be at the Nature Center. We have all the details on where you can sign up your little one. Stay with us because we have much more ahead on Shelby This Week. Did you check? Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. The high school dropout rate in the state of Michigan has declined and the graduation rate is increasing. The Michigan Center for Educational Performance and Information said more than 80% of high school students in the state graduated last school year. The number is up slightly from 79% that graduated in the 2015-2016 school year. Utica Community Schools is one of the 10 districts with the most high school students to improve their graduation rates. UCS had a 93% increase in their graduating class last year. State Superintendent Brian Whiston says an 80% statewide graduation rate is a new watermark for our schools. They've worked hard to steadily improve. This is another important step in helping Michigan become a top 10 education state in 10 years. We aren't there yet, so we need to keep working and moving forward. The actors and actresses at Eisenhower High School will take the stage for their spring musical. Before the curtain goes up on opening night, I caught up with the director of the production as well as the cast and got a sneak peek of their show. Once on this island takes audiences on a journey of love and breaks the wall of societal norms. Eisenhower High School has spent weeks rehearsing for this musical, and they are ready to fill the seats for their upcoming performances. This is a show I learned, I knew of about 20 years ago, I first saw this. And uh, since this is my last show as a director here, I'm retiring at the end of this year, I decided that this is, I had to do this show because it's just a great story, wonderful music. The cast includes 45 students, including one very excited second grader who landed her role with some help from her mom. My mom teaches here, um, and she's the music teacher, so it's sort of like, why wouldn't I be in this show? Because my mom works here. And was she ever frightened? Or was her love too strong? And did she know she'd end up in our story and our song? As the director, Dave assures this show will be enjoyed by anyone, regardless of their age. Definitely family friendly, um, lots of wonderful colors. You'll see the costumes here, there's a lot of bright colors and um, very fun for the whole family. We love sharing our art form with people and especially this story, uh, this, this musical is about about the people that are hearing it. So we want to have a great audience. Um, you won't be disappointed. Uh, it is, uh, it's, it's a show that you'll see and you'll go, why have I never heard of this show before? And it's actually on Broadway right now. It came back to Broadway um, and people still don't know about it. And I don't know why, but it's a, it's a wonderful tale. I think they should come and see it because it's really heartwarming and it tells an amazing story. And it's something like deep down the message everyone can really relate to. And the dancing is really good. The singing is awesome. And it's just really heartwarming and really great to watch. The show opens March 2nd and will run until March 4th. Tickets are available to purchase right now online at showtix, the number four, the letter U, dot com. Or you can buy them at the door. The box office will open 60 minutes before each show. If you have a preschooler who is interested in nature, the Burgess Shadbush Nature Center is a place you want to take them. On the first and third Thursday of every month, children are invited to attend the Nature Tales for Preschoolers. The center will provide a nature-related story, a snack, 
craft time, critter time, or on the nice days, an outdoor walk. There are two sessions available for children to attend. One's at 10 a.m. and the other session is 1.30 p.m. The cost is $2 per child and registration is required. You can register by calling 586-323-2478. That's all we have for this edition of Shelby This Week. Remember, you can always catch us online or on Facebook. Just search Shelby TV. And we'll leave you now with more scenes from Once on This Island, which will be performed at Eisenhower High School March 2nd through the 4th. Enjoy and thanks for watching. Well, don't you be afraid. Follow me, little girl. Let me be your guide. A pretty thing like you. Don't need a thing or two, and whatever you need, Mama will provide. Oh, down the road, this girl, you may lose your way. All alone in a world that may seem too wide. But sit on Mama's lap, and I will draw a map, and whatever you need, Mama will provide.